Imitating the activities of Lord Rishadev in his Paramahansa feature. Kalo, in this age of Kali, Adarme Uskris Yamane, because of increasing religious life, Bhavita Vyena, by that which was about to happen. By that which was your Lord. Be the the path of religion. Akuta Ayam, which is free from all kinds of evil things. This is the one I Apahaya, giving up. Um, such as practices, cleanliness, truthfulness, control of the senses and mind, simplicity, the principles of religion, and practical application of knowledge. The wrong paid path of atheism and some manages some improper against the Vedic literature. Nijamansaya by his own frontal brain. Manda most foolish. Some Trans oh, I'm sorry, we'll introduce translation. Sukadevi Goswami continued speaking to Narada's permission. My dear king, the king of Konga, Venka, and Gutaka, whose name was Narada, heard of the activities of Rishabda, and imitating Rishabda's principles introduced a new system of religion. Taking advantage of Kalamina, the age of sinful activity, King Arhat, being bewildered, gave him to the Vedic principles, which are free from risk, and concocted a new system of religion opposed to the Vedas. This was the beginning of the Jain Dharma. Many other so called religions followed this atheistic system. She was brought spiritual. When Lord Sri Krishna was present on the planet, a person named Pondraka imitated the four Hindu Narayan and declared himself the supreme personality of God. He desired to compete with Krishna. Similarly, during the time of Lord Rishabhade, the king of Konka and Venka acted like a Paramahansa and imitated Lord Rishabhade. He introduced a system of religion and took advantage of the fallen condition of the people of the age of Kali. It is said in the Vedic literature that people in this age will be more inclined to accept anyone as the Supreme Lord and accept any religious system opposed to many principles. The people of this age are described as Mandas Mandamatiya. Generally, they have no spiritual culture, and therefore they are very fallen. Due to this, they will accept any religious system. Due to this misfortune, they forget the Vedic principles. Following non-Vedic principles in this age, they think themselves the Supreme Lord and thus spread the call of atheism all over. The Ma Om Vishnu Bhagavad Krishna Staya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namade Namaste Sarasati Nivani Kodar Bhakti Shani Nivu Sarasati Sunyavadi Vasyapya Nivu Sarasati 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 Nivu Sarasati
जय श्री कृष्णा और जय मन सुमंद मन की बात पाता So this verse describes from the first canto of Shulman Bhagavatam what are the characteristics of people in this age of Kali. That is slow, very difficult to understand religious principles. Ah, uh, lazy, misguided for talking, so always disturbed. Now this is the characteristics of this age. I mean, this is the age of God. This is the age of quarrel and hypocrisy. As there are four ages in the human society, each age has certain characteristics, quality based on the environment and of the quality. Of the living entities in that age, so this is considered to be the darkness of all the ages, and because of that, people are not people are misdirected according to what is actually the real goal of life. Therefore, they will accept anything that sounds like it will also deliver some form of material satisfaction, some material happiness. That is a feature of this age. These are not interested. No, there's no other kind of scars. Some scars are different principles to buy a balance and the entity traverses from one stage to another, and they are called purification processes. Just like before the child is born, preparing for the birth of the child, we garble the steps, which is the And actually, it's only the second sense. There's one before that that he bears for the process of narrowing and vivaham samskara. And all of these samskaras are meant to bring about an awakening of transcendental, practical, spiritual understanding, knowledge. But because that this has been thrown out of the sage, people are really not trained in any way. Even from the time of birth, and therefore, even bringing people into the world, there is no rules, regulations, or restrictions. Everything is done according to what whatever people want to do, they know what they want to do. And because they're not guided by leaders, the leaders are all the same characteristic people that they're trying to lead. Um, nobody really follows any system. That is that is actually bona fide. In other words, the Vedas are very difficult for people to understand, and you have to have people who are actually qualified to understand the Vedas, teach the Vedas, and also teach others. I also live according to the Vedic principles, and because that is not found so much in Kali Yuga, everything on this topsy turvy. They hear and they find that there is always someone wants to imitate someone who appears to be um, different or just like Rishabha. Rishabha is a manifestation of I mean, it's actually an incarnation of the Supreme Lord. And he uh, was acting like a man towards the end of his life. He was putting stones in his mouth and passing stool in the earth, falling in it. He had a reason for doing that because just to discourage the non devotees, um, because God doesn't really try to convince people by miracles. People have to be convinced by the process of abortion, alleviated by Krishna or by the Supreme Lord. And by those who are actually practicing, in other words, devotees. And so to keep the atheists and atheists, you know, he acted in such a way. And of course, he's the supreme person. No, God is above. 
maybe elections, or whatever. But as it says, yada yada, we change style. Whatever great men do, follow common men follow in his footsteps. So you might say people might even accuse uh, those who are situated now might accuse uh, shopping for establishing a universe principle of your religion based on his personal activities. But just like when Krishna left the planet, what happened? He got shot in the foot with an arrow by a hunter. And they were appeared to have died like an ordinary human being. Of course, not even getting shot in the foot of an arrow could kill some person. But people well, thinking, oh yes, therefore he's just like us, or maybe a little bit better. So in order to keep the, as Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvasu Chahamrindi Sani Vistavata Smriti Gyanu. You want knowledge? I can show you how to find knowledge. I can give you that. I can give you the, the means by which you can understand. You want forgetfulness? I'll also help you in that way. You want uh, remembrance? That's also the Krishna is the uh, foundation by which people learn everything. So they're based on some, and then they're contact with the external energy or a contact with the spiritual energy. That may be coming from Krishna. But Krishna cannot be brought up for your religion because he is simply establishing a process by which people can continue their wishes and to claim to be. Uh, another word, variations of God. You see here, there's this King Hara. He was, uh, he saw Mashabli and he wanted to imitate Mashabli. And therefore, he acted like he was, you know, uh, doing the same thing that Mashabli did. Acting as an Abhinuda, following all the rules, following the regulations, and established a principle of religion. So this is the feature of the age of Kali, because in the age of Kali, uh, everything goes on. There is no set standard. Uh, therefore, all one has to understand things from those who are actually qualified. And by the mercy of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in this age, we get the understanding what is real religious principles. Because without worshiping the Supreme Personality of God as a true devotion, everything is either semi religious principles or material principles going on in the religious principles. There are two main deviations of real religion. One is mentioned here that the living entity, by practicing a particular process of elevation, thinks themselves as an the supreme personality of God. It's like in a class of people, they call themselves Maya bodies. Well, we call them Maya bodies. In other words, they, they propagate the principle of illusion. That illusion is simply uh, a feature of the living entity which exists in this world. Once illusion is, is dispelled, through the process of understanding, uh, practicing various types, studying the Vedas, practicing various types of uh, rituals, yagyas, then one can actually come back to their real position as being God. Prabhupada said there are so many gods. When Prabhupada was here, he said every, every day there's another God from India is coming into the West. Because people in the West don't even know what is real religious principles. And therefore, someone has some magic, you can come to some goal by you know, just reaching an entity or coming out or something. Well, he must be God. Only well, God can do that. But, but people, because people are not educated, maybe they accept that anyone or anyone who is a little bit above the norm as being great, or maybe even as worse. And people take advantage of that. I remember when we were traveling, we were preaching in the United States many years ago. There was this one personality. He was quite popular. He had come from India. He had uh, 32 little voices. 
you had a large entourage of people who were quite wealthy. Wealthy people coming in, they really saw everything through them. And he was teaching this uh, type of yoga that, that through sexual interaction, one can reach the highest form of spiritual bliss. <laughs> But they were definitely, definitely followers were practicing that. And they were calling themselves sannyasis and sannyasinis. And they were engaging in sexual activity. And that is considered to be the ultimate principle of happiness. And then he gives them a few rules and regulations that they follow. And so that's, I mean, even today, that he still goes on. The originator of the group is no longer on the planet. But I remember when we were traveling, I had uh, gotten uh, uh, the daily newspaper, which is USA Today. And on the front page of the newspaper, his picture was there, along with the article describing what he had said. In the evening before, I think it was with Shahad on the line. And um, they took one quote from the data. And he said that the great illusion to mankind is the idea of God. He said, The greatest illusion, I am. The greatest illusion to mankind is the idea of God. So I remember reading that and I was quite disturbed by that. But this is goes on and people think, oh, he's giving us even more information about what is the reality of life. Because if you just rule out the concept of God, you create yourself as your own God, then you can make your own rules and regulations. You don't have to follow all these things. That's the feature of the age of Kali. The main feature of the age of Kali is reject authority. Yeah, become your own authority or choose who you want to become with your authority. You can follow anyone who you think is something that you want to follow. Then you gotta let you create your own authority. So Kali is very uh, what we say, insidious and uh, cunning. He doesn't say reject all authority, he says become your own authority or choose your own authority. And that way he becomes the authority. People follow him. So whatever God, whatever the God begins of the current time in the society becomes the means by which people follow. And therefore, nobody has any direction because people are always you know, choosing, rejecting, choosing, rejecting. And, and that's why when Sri Ramavad came, uh, he said, you know, after some time, after establishing his movement a little bit, he said, we, in order to practice spiritual life, have to change so many names of God, and you have to restrict yourself its four principles. No more less than sex, let me explain what that meant. No reading, no gambling, no uh, intoxication. And I was listening just about a couple of weeks ago, Baba was discussing one young man who came to him at the beginning, and he uh, he challenged Baba on these things. And then, of course, Prabhupada made his remains shown. He was coming from that background of, you know, of loose activities. And then he left, and later on he met one devotee who was still, he told that devotee, he said, that Swamiji will never be successful. He's denying the basic principles of life. That was his, that was his, uh, uh, conclusion after practicing Krishna consciousness for at least two years. And, and just, you know, these, these activities that Swamiji is restricting is just not for everyone. 
And if we do that, you'll get no followers. So Prabhupada said, I'm not trying to get many followers, I'm trying to create at least one moon. Give me one moon and I can write up in the whole sky. You know, what's the use of all these twinkling stars? But of course, Prabhupada was merciful and inviting everyone to come and practice Krishna consciousness. But because of the age of Kali, people find it difficult to follow these four arrangements of principles. And Prabhupada said, if you can chant 16 rounds and follow these four regulatory principles from the time you uh, accept initiation to the time you leave the body, you're qualified to return to the spiritual world. And that's how our foundation is a real challenge of the ancient Kali. Everyone is trying to find ways to get around those principles or to create some subterfuge of principles that are that are substitutes for these. Because uh, it seems to be uh, too difficult. But the, the difficulty is the quality of our devotion service. In other words, if one is chanting nicely 60 rounds every day, following the regular principles becomes easy. It's based on the quality of our jhana, gender. And of course, there are some solutions along with it. But then one receives the mercy and the strength to, uh, you know, withstand the traffic attractions of Maya. Getting distracted in this age is very easy because there is so many ways that Maya is creating to get it distracted. But that even even great devotees get distracted, but they don't become a trap. They don't become a trap to the distractions that they come. They just see this as a botheration, it's just like that. Like I was traveling playing this two days ago. There was so many distractions. You know, just trying to uh, you know sit in the seat and get you know just get to go where you're supposed to go. There's so many things going on in the airplane. It's people out in the airplane. The stewardess is running up and down. It's just like, you know, going asking if you want something when you don't really want it anymore. So, you know, it's, this is the age of distraction. But if you get attracted to these distractions, if there's something that appears to be very interesting, then, then you move your way, you move your consciousness away. A proper understanding. So devotees, if they remain fixed and chanting their 16 rounds, the Prabhupada wrote 16 good rounds. He didn't just say 16 rounds. He wrote one letter to one very senior Prabhupada person. He said 16 good rounds. And 16 rounds. So we have to try to uh, acquiesce or bring about that quality in our children. And then that will give us the strength to follow the principles. And if we remain fit in following Hare Krishna, then Hare Krishna manages this is so nice. So nice. The other deviation that is feature of the age of Kali, aside from those who want to create their own ways of doing things, is to and intersperse final material principles to be part of spiritual practice. Um, wanting material desire as a result of emotional service. Like, I want to be happy. That's a material desire. But the Christian consciousness is the process of becoming happy, but one should not try to become happy, but once you try to deserve the service, one will automatically be because that's the nature of the most of the service. It takes one's consciousness above the three of material energy. And one will feel satisfied. If one wants good health, one wants peace of the mind, one wants to gain material things like money, position, all of these things are part of the 
tail energy that somehow filters it to you know, pure religious principles and makes it somewhat current vision about that, gather vision about that, or in other words, mixed with self-desire. Therefore, one cannot feel real pleasure that comes by way of emotional service. So, therefore, we find that if you do a little, you know, reconnaissance, you might say, or a little research, you find that most religions, as you call it, you know, always promise their followers some material benefits from the practice of their spiritual life, religious life. Because otherwise, one come. The problem wasn't like that. I was like, I'm giving you the real path, the devotion to Krishna. This is who you are. You're survive Krishna and that. And ultimately, your happiness is develop your love for Krishna because that's who you are. And that is your nature and your quality. So, and Prabhupada had to, you know, deal with all of that. And he said, all the years that came here to the door of society, they didn't want your attempt. And he remained fixed in the process. And so that's very much profuse in this age. People want to interject some ideas within spiritual life or to facilitate some desire, material desires. Or even to want liberation is another feature of material desire. Prabhupada explains that if you're engaged in devotional service, you really have a neighbor. It doesn't have to be cultivated separately, but there are people who do that. They want to be free from all material sufferings and therefore they practice the process of Krishna consciousness accordingly. But they're not practicing up to the standard, the practice of the activities but not in the proper mood. So what is that proper mood? Ayavina siddhi suni kyao maanarvata anukulayana mishina silva bhavati that devotional service has to be free from any desire, gain, or any desire for material gain, or any desire for philosophical speculation on the future. No karma, no gyan, and it has to be for Krishna or the desire to please Krishna. People go so on, he gives that clear understanding. And that's also mentioned, so I pour self for him down. The dog of the ox is in a white to clean the priyata, the yakma of sins. Devotional service is the foundation of the method is in business. And the service has to be executed. Oh, wait, you can be a Now, people think, oh, that's too much. How is it possible? Oh, wait, you can be a That means uninterrupted, our age, without any personalization. Well, getting rid of personal motivations may be a little bit more developed, more easy than. You know, without stopping 24 7. But if you practice Krishna consciousness, it becomes easy. The one feature that allows one to always be in that mood is to always remember Krishna. So we're always remembering Krishna, no matter what activities we may also be performing. And the evening is a way to remember Krishna, so I chant his only name. One can chant anytime, any place, anywhere. No rules, restrictions. Need to serve the shakis and all of Krishna's energies are there within his name. So the process is quite, as Prabhupada said, pro process of Krishna consciousness is simple, but it's not easy. What do you mean by not easy? It means that you have to work at it. It's an endeavor. It has to be applied every minute of every day in such a way that one is moving always towards the goal of what is that to ultimately develop love and Krishna. And that move comes by following the simple principles of engaging in emotional service for the desire to please the spiritual master, the desire to please the Vaishnavas, 
the desire and the wisdom by and so that's rare in this age of color. Very rare. You don't find that even the traditions that started off in pure devotional service, uh, somehow or other over the time period, they also allow for material principles to come in because they say, otherwise people will not come. For instance, the Christianity as it started off was a some of pure devotion so simply developing about the supreme lord but gradually the ruling group became into influence by political and social movements many of the basic principles were adjusted in order to facilitate people at a certain time of place we have to be careful with that, but not to allow here. Well, once the state's drift, chanted the 16 rounds following its formative the principles as the foundation by which it was continued to make progress. These things are, although they're very basic and seem to be quite routine, they are really strong in developing our Christian houses. And one of the definitions of no gambling is that uh, means no mental speculation. All my right that and says, do that gambling, as he calls it speculative gambling, also that means creating your own ideas. If a Rupa Goswami gives the formula and said one has to become Sadhavriti, Sadhavriti means following in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. And there's two categories in that for the Vrihastas and for those who are outside of that, in other words, the Sannyasis and Brahmachari. There are principles that apply to both. Same process is there, devotion. So how the devotion is executed is according to one's ashram. Now so there are some slight deviations. Not slight, not deviations, slight adjustments there. And so we follow that, it becomes a very easy. Therefore, we have to read Prabhupada's books and hear from Prabhupada regularly. Because if we don't, we will lose that understanding of what is the foundation for devotion and service. It's important to hear regularly. It's, therefore, it's not the Prayeshi Bhagavad Gita Dictum Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita was okay, Bhakti Bhagavad Gita nice. Hearing regularly, Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, engaging in devotional service. These are the foundations by which one stays steady in devotional service. That knowledge is comes through all of the illusion. And if we continue to remain fixed in hearing from Srila Prabhupada or those who are referenced in Prabhupada, we should also always hear from Prabhupada. And not that Prabhupada is gone, therefore we. Okay. We can just uh, hear from someone else. That's fine, as long as we hear from the bodies of the representative. But the human Prabhupada directly has a certain element to it that which is it's so hard and awakens immediately realization of what you hear. The Prabhupada speaks not from theory, but from realization. So it's important that we read these books, especially as you run the bottom of the ten classes, and also uh, hear from Srimad Bhagavan, Sri Guru, and correct, uh, getting the mercy of this person now and God. Okay, so in this particular verse, we get a feed, we get a little indication of what is the ancient color. The ancient color is to concoct, change, just and, and think that one has to do these things because uh, everything, what happened in the past is the past, now it's the present, the present is different than the past. And so adjusting. But there is sometimes adjustments made, and that's done by the Jones, including the Sadhguru's and Sarah's. It's like, well, I've made a few adjustments in order to preach in the West. 
But he never adjusts the principles, he adjusts the details, which allow for the principles to be applied in that environment. For instance, he allowed women to live in the temple and to worship on the same level as the men. But it was not that in India, people were women were not generally living in the temple, they would come to take part in the activities outside. And when Prabhupada saw that the culture and the mindset, the Western mentality was much different, therefore he gave. Uh, and of course, he also called his shastras to support what he has to gave. Equal status as far as the principle of worship to both men and women. And that was, he was criticized. Prabhupada had undergone so much criticism, both of them within and from without. But he understood clearly what is what is the process of emotional service and purpose. He heard early from his spiritual master. And uh, then he also said, you know, no longer spread this movement, I have to walk through fire. He says that he said I didn't look left, I didn't look right. It looked straight at him. Now, but he understood what Christian wanted, and he was able to apply it in the most amazing way. So this movement, in one sense, is a miracle being to come. Prabhupada took Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings and it in the most amazing way. And, uh, and because, of, because of his purity and his determination and his great intelligence, he was able to uh, were able to continue spreading Krishna that it's difficult age, but we're all challenged by the religious principles. But watered down and careful, but watered down religious principles. We should be very careful and stay as strict here from Shiva Prabhupada. And it'll always be happening in Krishna Prices. Because there's a lot of deviations from coming in, trying to come in and water things down. So, I have to be careful about that. And um, just for every day is there, I suppose. Okay, so we have about seven million minutes left. What is this? It's a little bit more folks. Or the microphone. Okay. I do have a question. <clears throat> you see about material desires, like peace of mind, happiness, freedom from pain, disease, suffering. Is there so this a liberation? Yeah, I, I didn't go there. I, I just kept myself uh, uh, circumscribed to it. So this is this is counterindicated that when the body is sick, there's suffering, mental illness. Uh, we should not pray because this is this is not your desire. Anyone can question it on his wall. That that's not indicated by uh, what I said. I said if I that was question, question that I'll give that oh, people on my mind. The question is that when people become ill in our Christian consciousness, uh, we should not pray for that in the internal state. No, because uh, we would show Sri Prabhupada gave me a personal example. He, uh, when one boy was sick, he, she had traveled with Prabhupada. To India, and Prabhupada came back to Europe, his friends. And uh, when she left the lady to him, take him to the hospital, she knew that, you know, quite sick. And when Prabhupada came in, and he, he, you know, he gave a few, he, he, he told the way he was doing it, he spoke about it, he said, If that sister is very sick, we should all go to the hospital and see you. And uh, Prabhupada also was this time in my work. One devotee, his name was Baba. 
I'm going to the Guru Puja. The devotees were saying that the you know, prayers to the spiritual mountain, and Prabhupada was receiving the worship. And the devotees were all over flowers going down. down. One devotee came and was part of that. And it was all over the flowers. Prabhupada noticed he had a cut on his leg. He called him all. This is right in the middle of the room. He said, Are you kidding Are you treating that? Medicine for that. And he was a little surprised that Prabhupada would have asked him that. He said, Oh, oh yeah, he is. Prabhupada could see and he wasn't taking care of it. So he turned to his secretary and said, Man, he said, Give me a pencil and paper and wrote down some medicine and hand it to him. Prabhupada was you know, all very concerned and really he's getting good help. And if anybody was sick, you could help. I think the best help. Only a sick is to give them some time. In other words, go see them. I just while they're sick, we should go talk to them until they well again. Sometimes I would even say, yeah. Well, the old day was if you're sick, you're in my end, therefore, this is the this result is when you're in my end. But that's not good for the consciousness, nor is not what Sri Ramana taught us. So the idea is the devotees are concerned about everything. We all want to do the preach for the benefit of others, so we don't take care of our own devotees. And what's the question of preaching to the non devotee person? So, yeah, if someone has some trouble, physically helps. You know, you know, I find out something, I try to offer some medicine. Sometimes, even nowadays, the bodies, when they get sick, everybody's offering like medicine. Some of the kind of one thing, some power. Sometimes the devotee gets it. <laughs> so, yeah, we should always consider if, you, uh, if we have trouble with our spiritual practice, we should try to offer some help. If we have people need something, you say they need some financial support for struggling, they can't keep their Christian consciousness and so because that becomes a deviation. We can also help with that too. So this is a society is say family. It's, the, it's not just a bunch of individuals together to do whatever one want all the same thing. It's the family who oh, I said we should be very much concerned to them develop loving friendly relationships with the girls accordingly. It's natural. So, yeah. There's, uh, there's many examples of that. But that was the old mood, you know, that they, because not the old mood, that was the beginning, the misunderstanding of it. It's important in the beginning. Yeah. Someone got sick, and so uh, we're doing by other. Yeah, uh, Krishna. Yes, um, the person is, I'm so sorry, I'm in your class. Sorry, I came in over in your class, but I heard, heard you saying about desires, and we should not have these desires, but now in this material world, it's, it's so difficult, even being a Christian conscious person, trying not to have desires. Or to, to desire, you know, someone to be well, or, or mm -hmm. how how do you, how can you go about besides changing the whole name? Well, can you repeat the question? Yeah. So the question is: Living in this material world, we're faced with so many activities, and we have to take care of that. So we develop a certain desire, right? So how do we deal with it? Well, to Krishna said in the Bhagavad Gita, he also says one who is regging, regging, and eating, sleeping, working in recreation can perform the yoga system. So taking care of one's responsibilities, like if you're 
Brahmacharya, you have less needs on the material level than those who live in the house of life, who have family, children, maybe have some occupation that not to support that. But that's just an activity that we have. It's not that we do it in order to get some happiness. It's just necessary. So we have to eat, we have to sleep, we have to take care of our health. We have responsibilities with family members. That's all of all of that. That's not a material desire. It becomes a material desire, becomes more important to our spiritual life. But it should be side by side, kept to take. We, we keep our spiritual life as the foundation for everything we do. And we really we use religious principles or spiritual principles to act in order to fulfill our needs on the material levels. Um, the idea is to desire Krishna consciousness and take care of business at the same time. It's it's just like you just have to take care of your material needs, but we're not trying to get some enjoyment. Just do it. It's like you know, well, you, you you have to take a, you have to stay clean, so you take a shower. Right? You can't say, well, taking care. of Getting clean is a material thing or it's based on the body. No. It's based on living according to the religion. That is, you see, that Simatra is a 